Hello people, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to build a minimal application and the application that we're going to build is a time card system. So I already went ahead and created a little document here that that goes through what we want our time card system to do and we essentially want five basic things. We want it we want to help the user to use the application, create a new project um, time card, be able to check in and check out, and then list the time spent on the project. So we're going to keep that up on this side uh, at least for a little while while we're building our system. And let's go ahead and create something called timecard.go. And we'll have package main, and I think we'll be able to fit everything in to a single file at least for this demonstration and we'll probably need time and OS and IO probably IO util I think so so I don't actually have any notes for this I'm just building it off the cuff so let's go ahead and build some functions to do these five things so let's uh, you know create project and we'll have a project name. We'll have a check in. And check out. With the project name. And we'll also have a function for listing the time. Okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, another thing I should probably talk about is this is going to be an extremely simple system. Uh, the way that uh, Tr keeping track of our projects is going to work as a project will just be a file and inside that file we're going to keep timestamps uh, Unix timestamps of the start and stop times and so then when we go when we want to list the time that we've worked on the project our system will open the file read in all the timestamps and calculate all the uh, the sum of all the times in between them so let's go ahead and do that. Creating a project will be the equivalent of just creating a file of that name. So let's do os.create uh, project name. And eventually what we'll do is we'll create a good um, standard place to create these, these project files. But what we'll do right now is have it be created at the point of calling the application. And also, I, I've uh, pulled up some, some things in here uh, for references. So we've got, so we've got some nice uh, Golang package thing, and we've got go by example, how to write files, as well as how to check if a file exists. So that's, that's probably what we want to do uh, first, is, is check if that file exists. So if uh, let's see how did they do that there so we need to do if error os stat project name and was there anything else that had to be there okay good and then uh, what, what did they say oh yeah os is not error how did they do that okay with error And what we'll do here is we'll grab this. And that says if it does not exist, we'll go ahead and uh, paste that in. There, so that will create a project if it does not already exist. Very good. So then the check-in, what we'll do is we'll have a file which will be os.open project name and I think we need a couple other things here we need 
No, we just, we just open the file and then if successful, associate file has O read only. So we actually want open file, which allows us to put a flag in there. So, so we'll say, open file. So we'll say we want, we'll just do it always read write is what we'll do. So we'll open our file and we'll say, uh, how does it go? We do os dot open read write. And I think we'll say that it, we'll just do 0666. So there we go, we've created it. Um, in fact, what we'll do is we will create project. So that way, if, if our project isn't created yet, it will be. And that will, so that will create our file. So then we'll do, be able to do file.write time now uh, Unix. And since we're done, we can do file.close. No need to do a deferral since we've, we're going to do everything right there. And the same thing uh, we're going to do for check out. Okay. And then for listing the time, we want to be able to read in a file. So we'll say uh, uh, bytes, and we're going to skip all the errors for this. And we'll go IOUutil read all project name. And then what we'll do is we'll break it up into lines. Oh yeah, so that's what we need to do. We need to write this. In fact, we should convert the time. Let's see, should we convert the, we should convert the time to a string and also add a new line in there. So what we'll do is, let's see, how do we convert that? Can we, can we just say Maybe we may have to use uh, string conversion. Oops. We'll test it out. So then we'll break this up into lines where we do. Oh, we'll have to add strings up here. So we'll do strings dot split and we give it the string that we're looking through and we're going to split it on new lines and I actually forget exactly how the string split works. So let's take a look at that. Let's look for strings and split. Okay, so okay, so it actually it doesn't have any errors. It just you give it a, a string and a separator. So that should be good. So lines, strings, uh, split a separator, and then what we'll do is we'll create a uh, total time, which will be an integer. of zero. And what we'll do is for, actually, let's see if we can, okay. 
we're going to do four, let's see, line and range lines. I think the I think the uh, Unix timestamp is actually 64-bit integer. So let's just go ahead and make sure that it's um, in, in 64. And then what we'll do <clears throat> is we actually want to we'll, uh, let's go ahead and put a stream conversion in there. So stream conf. And we'll do uh, total the total time. Okay, so this is another thing that we're, we're going to do is uh, we're going to have check in time and check out time. So what we want to do is we want to sum up the differences of the pairs of check in and check out times. So what we'll do is uh, let's see. So what we'll do is uh, we need to we need to actually we probably shouldn't do it by line. We should do have a regular for loop. I is zero, and have I be less than. Uh, have I be less than the length of the lines. And I, we're gonna have add two to I each time. And we're gonna do this for length of lines Minus one or minus two? We'll we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll have to think about that for a second. So essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, the start time be equal to lines i. And we're gonna we're gonna do a string a string convert uh, string conversion. Let's see. Let's take a look at that. Let's go back to packages. String conversion. And we'll do. I think we want to do a. What is it? A parse uh, parse int. Yeah, we want to do a parse int which has a string, the base, and the int size. And it returns an int64. So we'll do string, base, and size. So we give it we give it a string. Uh, parse int. And it'll be base 10 and a size of 64 bits. So start time will equal that. Stop time will equal string conversion parse int lines i plus 1 base 10 64 bits. And then what we do is the total time is the uh, stop time minus the start time and we add that to the total time and then we'll uh, do a thumb to print line total time Oh, actually, what we'll do is we should convert it to a time that that makes sense to the user. So let's actually convert the total time to hours. 
So we're going to say that hours equals, and the total time starts off in seconds. So we're going to convert seconds to hours. So we're going to do uh, the total time, uh, or the hours will be the total time uh, divided by um, 60 seconds gives us a minute, and 60 minutes gives us an hour. So let's go ahead and print out the hours. And what we should do here is, uh, since we want to show it in a kind of a, a decimal, so we'll change this to a float. And that should work for that. So now what we need to do is let's actually start testing some of this stuff. So we have a way to create a project, check in, check out, and list the time. We still don't have any help functionality and we haven't tested any of this yet. So let's go ahead and test. So let's go ahead and uh, write something to create a project. So let's uh, create project. Uh, hello and then we'll do check in notice we don't have any error checking yet either we need to add that in and I think we have if we use os.sleep Let's take a look at that. Let's go down to the OS package. I think the OS package gives us sleep. Maybe it doesn't. So how do we... Ah, so we, we want a time.sleep is what we want. So it looks like we want um, oh yeah I have I have ad block going on. So uh, what we really want is the time package time. There we go. Time package and we want sleep. Okay, and we just need to give it a duration. So the example of that is to give it a you know time dot millisecond, which is a, which is great. So let's do so just for testing purposes. We want we want to sleep. So time dot sleep, and we'll make it uh, sleep for one second. So that's a thousand times time dot millisecond. There we go. And then what we'll do is we'll do list time for hello. So let's go ahead and run time card. Oh, undefined OS is not error. Uh, is not error. So let's take a look at this. Oh, is not exist. That's what we need. Okay. So and then we had we had some other things that were wrong. Uh, too many arguments in call to OS open. Ah, yes. Ah, it needs to be open file. And let's take a look at that. So now, now we're doing some debugging. So open file, uh, multiple value. Oh yes, open file needs, uh, uh, returns these things. So we, we need to say, Oops, actually, accidentally did this. 
There we go. Now, let's go to the OS package. Open file. So it actually returns a pointer to a file and an error. So that's something that we have to deal with. Then time card. And let's, for now, not worry about the error. So now we'll have a little bit less errors to work with. So cannot use time now. Unix uh, type n64 as type byte. Ah, yes. Go to 29. Actually, let's uh, convert this to a string. Just like we did above or below. Hopefully that will work for that. Um, if it doesn't, we can always uh, use string conversion. So cannot use as type byte to file. Oh yes, yes, that obviously that makes sense. Okay, needs to be a type byte. So we'll convert that string to type byte. So convert all of that to type byte. And we'll have to do the same over here. Byte. There we go. Okay, so too many car uh, to open. Oh, yes. So we need to do the same sort of thing down here. There we go. Okay. Um, oh, we can't use its read all. So let's go here. So this uh, read all for project name, this is not a type writer. So um, we don't want read all here. We actually want read file. There we go. Actually, it's given us time zero, so let's let's see. Did we create it? Uh, yes. So we created a file called hello. If we look inside of it, um, well, we, we wrote bytes to it. So uh, let's see. So maybe what we need to do instead is actually use a string conversion. String conversion, and we're going to do a format int. And so if we if we format an int, let's go packages, string conversion. Format int. Okay, so we give it the integer and the base that we want it to be. So we're, we're going to be in base 10. And then we'll output a string. So we give it the integer and then base 10. And that should give us a string. Uh, string com, uh, string conv format int base 10. Okay, so now we're going to, actually what we're going to do is we're going to remove the hello file. So now we don't have the hello file and we're going to run this thing again. Go run time card. There we go. So it gave us a, ooh, a large negative time. 
let's see what we got here. Oh, and that's that's because we never wrote. Let's see, check out. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're not creating this this uh, project every time. Should only be doing it once. And then when we check out, Okay, it seems to be okay. Oh, I bet we need to have a, let's open this other one, Golane packages. Let's go down to OS. We're gonna take a look at when we open the file we probably want to say that we want to append. So I bet we want to, because we want read write. Uh, let's see the flag. See, there should be should be a list of the flags here somewhere that we can use. Here we go. Append. Oh, append. Very good. So let's do that. go. We'll remove the hello and we'll run this again. Okay, that looks that looks uh, much better. So if we go hello, there we go. And so that's how many hours Right, so 0 0.0002 hours, and if we, uh, uh, if you if you multiply that by, um, what 3600, that should be about one second. So that seems to be working. So it seems like we have the uh, basics of our system working. So uh, the the next thing that we need to do is we need to start creating this. Uh, interaction thing because we, what we want to be able to do is have the person call the time card application from the command line and give it command line arguments which I think what we're gonna have to do is do that next time because I've already used so much time so thanks for watching people next time we will take a look at building out this system to use command line arguments